Hey, have you ever wondered how to do a ray sphere intersection? Ah, no, no, you haven't. Well, in that case, in the future, you certainly won't wonder because I'm going to explain exactly how to do this. Let's say that we have a sphere over here. And let's also say that we have a ray, not over there, but over here. And that ray, obviously, it has a ray origin and it has a ray direction. Great. Now, any point on this ray can be described like so. So any point on this ray, any point P, is described by starting at the ray origin and then going in the ray direction for a certain amount of time. Okay? So this time, if this time is zero, then my point is just going to be the ray origin plus zero times this, uh, uh, the ray distance. And if, uh, if my t increases, then the, the point will slowly start moving along the ray. All right. So, so now the question becomes, what is this t1 over here and what is this t2 over here. So those are the intersection points that we're trying to find. Um, now let's just first find something else which is the point, if, if this is the center of the sphere, let's first try to find the point that is the closest to the center of the sphere. Okay, let's call that point T. Alright, so this would be 90 degrees. So that turns out to be, so point T turns out to be the dot product between this ray, okay, so the, like it's the, our, uh, this vector, the vector that goes from the ray origin to the center of the sphere, and the uh, ray direction. So, so the first one is S minus RO, which is the vector from the origin to the center of the sphere, and the ray direction. All right, so that's my T. Now, let me draw this again. Uh, and and just rotate this so that everything is straight. So let me go over here and give it a bit more space. Not that. Uh. All right. Well, let me just draw it like this. All right. And now there is my ray, and here is my center of the screen uh, of the sphere, and. Now we have our T1 over here and our T2 over there. And now our T is over here. Um, and so now what we're interested in is finding this value X here, which is the distance between here and here, right? So, well, so let's try to find that X. Well, the X we can find by using the formula for a circle. So the formula for a circle is x squared plus y squared equals the radius squared. Okay, and the radius obviously is that over there, right? And that's that's given. Um, so if we let so let's solve this for for x. So what we can do here is like take this y squared, put it on the other side. So now I have minus y squared and that will get rid of all of this and now we we take the the square root on both sides of the equation so then I can get rid of this and then over here I'm just gonna have the square root and whenever you do that you have to take care that that's either plus or minus because if it's minus and you square it then it it becomes plus so that's for my x now, uh, we, we already have the, the radius here, but we don't have this value yet, this y. And what is this y? Well, the y is basically over here. Okay, so, and what, what is the y if we go back to over here? So my y would be there, right? So my y is just the distance between this point s and this point described by, by t, which is actually uh, found by using this formula. So let's do that. So the y turns out to be the length 
of S minus P. All right, so now we have um, now we have all of the things that we need to calculate our t's, our, our t1 and t2, because t1 is just t, right, this t, minus x, right, that x. And t2 equals t plus x, okay? So that is how we find the intersection on a sphere. So now let's try to implement this in Shader Toy. So let me put my tablet away and rearrange some stuff over here. And let's get Shader Toy. So there we go. So the first thing I have to do is, let's get rid of this. I have to normalize this a little bit more because I want my UVs to be in the center of the screen. So I do that by subtracting half of the resolution. And then I just divide that whole thing by just the Y instead of the X, Y. And then let's also get rid of all these fancy rainbow colors. So I'm just gonna set my color to black. And let's get rid of this as well. All right, so there we have a black screen. So now let's define some stuff. So first I'm gonna define my ray origin, which I'm just gonna keep it simple, find it at zero. And then I'm gonna make my ray direction, which I'm gonna make a very, very simple camera model. If you don't know what I'm doing, check out this video. Um, so that's vec3 uv.x comma uv.y comma uh, one. And then, all right, I need to close my bracket. And then I can define my point S, which is the point, uh, the center of the sphere, which I'm gonna stick in the middle of the screen and then some distance away from us. So let's say at four, and I'm gonna define my radius. Again, keep it simple, just one. All right, now, can, now I can, uh, calculate my value t. So I'm going to do float t equals the dot product of s minus the ray origin. Um, all right, uh, and obviously the ray direction. And now I can do my y. So y equals the length of s minus uh, p. Actually, I have to get my value p that corresponds with the value t, so ro plus rd times t. Okay, so now I have my y, now I can get my x, so my x equals the square root of r times r plus, uh, not plus, minus y times y. And now I can get my t. So t1 equals t minus x, t2 equals t plus x. And now there's one thing uh, that I did mention, which is what happens when the ray doesn't hit the sphere at all. And what happens then is that my, my y value that I get is gonna be larger than my radius over here. So I have to account for that. So over here, I have to say if, this should only happen if the y is smaller than the radius, then it should get, get in here. Because otherwise, uh, I'm wasting resources because I'm not hitting the sphere anyways. And plus, uh, this will become negative, which uh, the, the square root of a negative number is going to be undefined. So that's why I put that in here. All right, so let's see, let's let's keep it simple again. So let's say over here, call equals vec3, and then let's put it to white. So now that gives me a sphere. Um, but I can I can use these values to, to color the sphere uh, because these values are basically the distance from the origin, right? From, from the origin to where it hits the sphere. So I can say, Okay, like give me this this T1 value, and here it still turns out turns out to be white, because let me drink something here for a second. Okay, here it still turns out to be to be white because my T1 is larger than one, 
I have to remap it into the 0, 1 range. So for that, I'm going to quickly make a function called remap 0, 1. It's going to take an input of float A, a float B, and a float T. And that's just going to remap my number into a 0, 1 range that we can see. So for that, I'm going to do this T minus A divided by B minus A. And what that will do is that if, if T is A, then it will return 0. If T is, is B, it will return 1. And anywhere in between, it will return something in between. So now I can use that to, uh, to, to make a value that we can actually see. So I'm going to do float C equals and then remap 0, 1. And then I'm going to remap this T1 value to something we can see. So for that, uh, let's think about it. So we have the, the front of the sphere here is basically the sphere center, the Z, the Z position plus the, uh, minus the radius. So that's S dot Z minus the radius. And then over here, it's so over here on the edge, it's just S dot Z. So, um, and obviously I put that in the wrong function so I have to put that over here and then over here I say C okay and now it did exactly the opposite of what I wanted so let's just turn these around and we have a sphere a shaded sphere no less all right so let me put that full screen so you might wonder like why go through all this trouble for a simple sphere intersection but you can make some pretty cool stuff with that check out this video for instance and um, either way, I will see you next time.